Okay guys, so this is the basic rig. Um, I'm just gonna go talk you through it. Um, essentially, the main sort of heart and soul of the, the rig is the two filmer sound amplifiers. So this was the first one that I obtained and these were, these were actually modified by uh, an amazing um, engineer, electrical engineer by the name of Bill Crenard, who resides in the USA. And he was famous for the, the Two Rock Company, which he was involved with and in um, founded. Um, and basically, essentially these were just, this was a, a projector housing and there was a projector inside here and you can actually see this little flap here that opens up and that was where the, the projector um, would um, project the film image onto a screen or a wall or whatever. And they were used in prisons and libraries and so forth. So this really, this was the first one I got which is a 6v6 1950s um, projector amplifier and uh, we've got two little switches. The first one's a, a preamp boost, and this is like a, um, just an EQ selector, which I normally have it on high to just give you more sort of chime. And you've got two 6v6, um, you've got a, um, and then a 212 AX7s. I think this is a, I can't remember which tube this is, uh, the V1, and, um, and then you've got another tube at the back, which is a rectifier tube. These compress really beautifully. They're very sort of hi-fi um, and uh, just a great sound. Uh, actually, they came with an 18 speaker, but this one's not connected up because this is connected up to a Celestian um, 12, sorry, Celestian 12 inch type A speaker in there, which is a relati relatively cheap speaker, but it gives me quite a robust sort of strong neutral sound out of this amplifier, which I like for live use. Um, let's have a look at the other one. This one's a mid 60s example and this is a very unique one because it was made um, for 240 volts. Most of these are actually made in Japan in the 60s and um, they were made for like 220 and uh, this is a very rare model which was made for 240 so very lucky to obtain this because of course here we are in England and um, we are on 240. This, this one here however is running at one, I don't know if it's 17 or 120 um, bolts so therefore I have this this here which is um, a, a step down transformer and it just and, and this is a meter to tell me exactly what that's putting out so I can give this amplifier exactly the voltage find the sweet spot and give it the voltage that it needs uh, this one doesn't need that so this one um, is a lot easier to go and gig in England and um, we've got two, we've got two EL84s a rectifier tube and we've got two 12x7s um, and then we've got another tube here um, which is actually, um, this is an EF86, an EF86 tube inside there. And that actually wasn't, that wasn't originally in the circuit, this, this V1 tube. Um, it had a solid state um, sort of um, transistor, whatever it had there. I don't know what it, exactly what it had, but it, a silicon transistor or something. But this... I, I asked Bill to retrofit this because um, I just think it gives a better tone because the, the one in 1964 had that EF86 and then in 1965 they went solid state and the 240 model is in 1965 without this so I got um, Bill Crenard to very kindly retrofit that back into the circuit just to give it uh, the sound that I loved. Um, so that's, that's and this, this amplifier here is actually going through this Bell & Howell 8 inch speaker. It's, I'm guessing this is a Goodman speaker, but I, I could be wrong there. But it's just, it, and this is pointing backwards, you'll notice. So, what I do is at a concert, I will have these running together, and this will be mic from the back of the, the cab. But it, even though the, the amp's facing forward, but it just gives a bit of ambience. It's strange because it's quite, um, and, you, and you can see you've got a preamp boost switch here, and we've got the EQ switch here, but I put it down to be able to use with the 18 speaker because it's a lot brighter. And then having these two amps together, you've got this really ambient sound, it's really beautiful. Now, in order to make, to feed the two amplifiers, I just knocked up a very simple Y splitter um, box here. We're coming in, and we're gonna work, I'm gonna, we'll work backwards here, so I can show you how the signal gets here, but this, this is a um, buffered, Y splitter, so it's got a TL072 op amp, 
each half of the op amp is feeding um, the two outs um, and it's got a, a couple of filter caps and um, an, an Aero 100 nanofarad input cap there as well and also for the impedance value there's a couple of um, resistors I think there are 2.2 um, meg resistors if, I, if, if my memory serves me right um, we're, we're going to come we're coming in here now we're coming out of this unit here into this box and then it gets split and what the reason that is that is I want both signals to have reverb and this is my my reverb this is a Victoria re reverber ammo and so this, this is the actual reverb tray and this is the um, the reverb unit but it also has vibrato um, which is really beautiful which I use quite a bit as well so the vibrato sound on this unit is absolutely amazing but it gives me my reverb as well so that's how I get my reverb okay so let's go from right to left this is basically controlling the reverber ammo we've got a switch here um, for vibrato and we've got a switch here for the reverb but the reverb doesn't work but it doesn't matter because the reverb's on all the time but this is important switching the, the vibrato effect on and off that's quite important then we've got the Texas flood pedal now I'm going to make a video on this and my journey making this pedal and also another pedal which was housed is housed in this case the which is the, the Tiger pedal, which is I call the Crossfire. So the Texas Flood is my own circuit based on a tube screamer, but it's got a um, stuff taken out, stuff put in. <laughs> it's the easiest way to explain it. The Crossfire in the Tiger pedal, which this normally is, but it's not. This is a, another thing which I've just used the case for, but the Crossfire pedal essentially is a clone of a TS-10 tube screamer with some mods from Landgraf and Clay Jones, etc. a few of my own things. But the Texas Flood pedal, what it does is you can go, um, I, you know, I, I base this on the Texas Flood album. So you can go clean here and it's quite sparkly and you can get like a Lenny sound and then you can come up here a bit more for a Texas Flood sound and then you've got Testify and then you go all the way and you've got the, um, um, the solo on um, Little Wing or Voodoo Child or something like that. So that's kind of the idea behind the Texas Flood pedal. Um, and uh, you can use it as a clean sparkly boost as well because when you come right here it's it's clean as a whistle and that's how my good friend Rick Vito uses this pedal um, as he has one of these and that's he uses it more like a, a kind of clean sparkle boost but I kind of I use it pretty much in the kind of testify sorry the Texas flood what I call the Texas flood setting and that just gives a really nice um, kind of breakup sound on an amp <clears throat> with the Cuda Caster guitar especially so that's that's the Texas flood pedal and um, I think I'm going to make about maybe 10 or 15 or 20 more of these and that's it. I won't make any more because these are hand-wired with larger components and um, they take up, they take me anyway, probably somebody else it would probably be quicker, but it take me a while to make so um, I'm only going to make a few more of these and that's it. Um, and this is, uh, like I said, this is actually in the Crossfire casing, um, the other pedal I make, but this is a, in fact a fuzz face circuit using the germanium transistors, um, I think they're AC 128s. I'm not an expert on fuzz pedals. I just got a pulled a, um, a circuit from the internet, um, which said it was a, a mid 60s, um, you know, um, fuzz face circuit, and, and, I, and I built that. Now I didn't want to get involved with um, the bias pot, you know, where you can you can, you can um, effectively tune it to the sweet spot because I'm not using this fuzz face pedal with a Strat trying to get Hendrix and um, Eric Johnson type tones. I'm just using it with my Cuda Caster to get some sort of, um, you know, avant-garde sort of mushy sounds. And and so I just pulled a circuit off the internet, made the pedal, slapped some germanium transistors in there. There you go, this is, this is just a potluck, whether it sounds good or not, but it does sound really good with the Cuda Caster. So it's kind of, it's good enough for me. Then we move on to the um, Crucial Audio Echo Nugget pedal. Now I saw this on in, in a pedal, sorry, I saw this in a photo of Raikuda's rig and thought, what is that? What is this big gold pedal? And then I found out that it's it's a delay. And from the photos, I could see that Raikuda was using this as a slapback delay, as far as I'm aware anyway. Um, and so that's really how I have this set. This channel here has a tube and it's um, the uh, boost which is a really nice sounding boost, but I'd never use that. I just use the delay section here, which also has another tube in it as a preamp tube, I don't know what. And I mean, the tubes are getting um, at least, um, you know, a good 
voltage they're getting it so this is 1.1 amps um, so the so it's not just like for example the tube in the um, what's that T-Rex um, reverb pedal where I think that tube was just for show but this these these tubes are actually getting a bit of juice and and affect the tone but anyway regardless this is a really beautiful sounding slapback what I call the 50s you might have heard me say this before, the Sun Studio slapback sound, which I have to have. So this is an always on pedal, okay? This is the only pedal in, in the rig which is always on. That's always on. And it, and it gives me a kind of a slapback fatter tone, you know, because I have the time very down low, I have hardly any repeats, and I have the mix down low as well. So all, all these controls, to find, this, I have to find the sweet spot, but, but the, they're all down low. Steve, who makes these, is a really good friend of mine, and he gave me a lot of advice, a lot of advice, as, as did a few other people when I was making the the Texas flood circuit. So this is, lastly, this is a, a really cool story. Um, Rick Vito, he's a good friend of mine, um, an amazing guitar player, total legend. He gave me this pedal very kindly, and he explained to me that um, back in the day, way back, I think in the 80s or something. He actually gave Howard Dumble, Howard Alexander Dumble, a Echoplex to fix. And um, um, Howard gave Rick Vito, because I think Rick was on tour with Fleet Mac or something at the time, and he needed a delay effect, so um, Dumble lent him this delay pedal. And, and as you can see here, you don't know if this is going to come across in the video, but you can see Dumble's actually written um, Dumble. He's actually etched his name Dumble onto the pedal. <laughs> Um, and the story panned out that um, Rick never got his Echoplex back. <laughs> so, so Rick kept this and then he gave it to me very, very kindly. So thank you very much, Rick Vito. Um, and that just, this, the role of this last delay, and this could be any delay, it doesn't have to be this particular delay, but it could be any one. Um, I generally don't tour with this delay because it's, you know, it's a bit of a thing being it's Dumbles and Rick Vito's delay pedal. I keep this safe at, at home, but... The, the the delay after this one, the, uh, after the uh, slapback delay, is an ambience delay. So it's just a longer delay, and it doesn't even have to be really that much in time. It's just to give some ambience to some uh, when I'm playing some chordal things um, uh, or some slide effects. Then I use this, and I also use this when I when I have the fuzz engaged. So my sound with the fuzz generally is the vibrato engaged, the fuzz engaged the slap back and, and this ambient delay. And that's how I use the fuzz with the Cuda caster. Okay. Okay. So this is, um, this instrument here is called an Ingoni, which, um, when I was traveling West Africa, I discovered this many years ago and got some lessons on how to play it. In fact, I even wrote a book about, um, how to be, start out learning this instrument, finding out what, <clears throat> what it is. And here's another, uh, crucial audio pedal, which is a great pedal. It's called a tone nugget. And this is a boost pedal. And um, actually, um, I actually make a, um, a boost pedal called the Goose Master. <laughs> and I've actually, my, my actual last boost that I had, I gave away to a good friend of mine who's also a Ningoni player called Max and uh, here in England. And uh, so he uses that to boost his Ningoni because the Ningoni is using, you know, um, the, the output is just next to nothing, so you need a boost for it. At the moment, I'm just using this Tone Nugget here by Crucial Audio to boost boost the signal um, because I use that through the PA with a sampler and um, where I sample percussion um, for my live shows. So that's kind of, that's, that's another sort of system. But like I said, um, and again, I only make these, I'm only going to make probably five of these um, quite possibly, but for some Ningoni players. And it's just a boost that's specially sort of EQ'd for the Ningoni, which works kind of quite well. So that's really um, the other side of uh, the sort of live work that I do with the Ningoni and then the percussion. And then I use this um, RC30 loop station. It's a pretty, pretty simple unit. And then that goes to the PA and that um, this um, is what I use for sampling my percussion instruments and sometimes I sample the Ningoni as well and put that through the PA.